James Kaufman, World News Report today. Ladies and gentlemen, it is October 1st and we're still in a very strong geomagnetic storm, believe it or not. It's even really gotten stronger on us. I just can't imagine the solar winds from that coral hole already reaching Earth, but it looks like that's what has occurred. At least that's our best guess thus far. Taking a look at the KP index is a combination of solar winds and plasma hitting the ground in different areas of the country. Our boulder index first. Well, it shows 12 hours of a G1 geomagnetic storm and well, three hours of a rest period. Taking a look at our Fredericksburg KP index, we started the day with six hours of a geomagnetic disturbance, followed by three hours of very light solar winds, followed by a G1 geomagnetic storm. Now our estimated planetary index. This is the KP index that was just upgraded by NASA, exclusively used by NASA and NOAA. And you'll see that it actually measures in thirds instead of whole numbers like the rest of them. And this starts the day out with nine hours of a G1 geomagnetic storm, followed by a geomagnetic disturbance, followed by a G2 geomagnetic storm here. Finally, our college index, always or usually the most sensitive, started the day out with six hours of a geomagnetic disturbance, went to a G3 geomagnetic storm, and then back to a G2 geomagnetic storm for the last six hours. Moving over to NOAA's dashboard itself, we've had another three-hour period added, a G1 geomagnetic storm here, just added, coming off that G2 geomagnetic storm, the lightest G2 you could have, a 5.67. So we've had 12 hours of a G1 geomagnetic storm, three hours of a G2 geomagnetic storm, and a lull in the middle of the day, which makes very little sense. All right, it looks like we've had two M-class solar flares. First one was right around 2.30 UTC time, an M1.26. We had a couple of strong C flares in there, and we just had a second M class solar flare. And this was right about 1645 UTC time. So it came in at about a 1.25. A 1.25. So two M1 solar flares. Now, I'd say nothing to worry about, but our shields are down. We're in that equinox period. We're dealing with the Russell McFerrin effect. And, well, these are directly Earth-facing blasts. So, if they lifted a coronal mass ejection off the sun, they will be inbound and they will be disrupt uh, disruptive towards Earth. Headed over to Space Weather Live. We see that we've had one M class solar flare here out of 4232. That's going to be a beta gamma sunspot. You can tell by the color orange here. But we have two delta class sunspots, the most complex sunspots, a 4230 and 4236. Now, 4236 is going to be responsible for the last M class solar flare. They just have not had time to post it yet, believe it or not. This happened exactly 72 hours ago, and I think we've dealt with that yesterday. I saw the plasma jump yesterday. So we have two light M-class solar flares, one from 4232 and one from 4236. It's not mentioned yet, although we'll be able to visibly see it pop off. All right, 15% chance of an X-class solar flare. We do have two delta sunspots uh, on our Earth-facing solar disk. 60% chance of an M-class solar flare. We've had two thus far. 
and we're running at C 3.3 currently basically a C baseline so there's a hundred percent chance of having a C flare over to HMI intensogram you can see 4236 responsible for the last M flare as you will see in just a moment and then 4232 responsible for the other M 1.25 solar flare earlier in the day 4230 thus far has been quiet these are our two delta sunspots this is our beta gamma sunspot and these are all simple sunspots we have a total of nine sunspots that are earth facing currently and there should be more named uh, coming around the limb here all right our last hour on it goes so the ultraviolet imager you can see that m flare pop off right there just like we talked about that is from that delta class sunspot 4236 and there she blows now we have had this coral hole facing earth for some time looks like some of it has had a chance to face earth for at least 40 hours and we're seeing a huge uptick in solar winds as i will show you guys now just in case y'all couldn't see it no one was nice enough to put together this cruel hole well pictorial for us showing us where the cruel hole was of course the cruel hole is where we don't have our outer canopy uh, and it allows solar winds to leave the sun at a much faster pace coral holes create solar winds Filament eruptions and solar flares create coronal mass ejections, which are made up of plasma and solar winds, but their main component is plasma. All right, headed over to our NOAA KP index forecast from the first, second, third. They came in and, well, Monday morning, armchair quarterback this thing yesterday. They haven't done this today, so it's, uh, well, nothing but good news. Although this is not reality here on the second, we've all seen that already. I think it's so strange that they come in and fix their work after they've already screwed it up here on the KP forecast. All right, over to our Space Weather Prediction Center. We've just upgraded this, this model for 1.3 million dollars last year and let's see how it did today is the first it's got plasma starting the day off at around i would say seven seven maybe seven and a half centimeters and ending the day at about four maybe three centimeters so seven and a half to three something like that that's our plasma. Let's look at our solar winds on the first. Now they started out at about about 425, maybe 400, and they did go up, but they only rose to about 550. Looks like they'll rise the rest of the way tomorrow. Here they have it going up to about 575. I believe solar winds are currently up to over 800 kilometers per second over 800 kilometers per second seven and a half to three and for, let's see 400 to maybe 475 over to our d region absorption prediction center d region being the lowest part of our atmosphere the closest to us earth this is our x-rays are getting through the radiation and everyone's getting a good dose as you can see all around the globe this is the last m flare that just popped off right there mostly over south america and the caribbean with some very very small parts over maybe florida over parts of the atlantic and pacific and of course uh, the caribbean's 
pretty well dead in the strike zone of that, along with Venezuela, Colombia, etc. All right, headed over to our Discover satellite, real-time solar winds. You see our shields are down here, at least leaning towards the south here. That, well, is what I'm talking about when I say that uh, our shields have a southern component to them. It really allows what little solar weather uh, to come through. Now, I would say that, but we're seeing some pretty strong solar winds. And we had this bunch of plasma here. Now, most of the day, plasma has been in the 2, about 2.75 range, a baseline down to 0 here, about 2. I didn't really see it go up to 7, but I saw this period here where we got some readings up to 45.54, 29, uh, a lot of, oh, 43.12, No, I don't know what's caused that. We don't really have a, uh, anything as far as a spike in temperature here. Anything to prove that this would be good data, but there's so many of them. Uh, I assume we got hit by something there. Something. A bird, perhaps? That was a joke. All right. Uh, here we go. So we have these anomalies up to about 46 centimeters cubed plasma. Regularly, it's at about 2. Remember, they said it would start at 7 and up at 2. Well, it looks like it could end up around 1 or 2. Solar winds. They start right here. They said it would start off today at 400. Start the day off at 700, not 400. It's supposed to go up to 475 kilometers per second. And there's an 854 there. It has continued to rise here. I do think we'll have these crawl winds for several more days. After that, we had some anomalies here. There's an 830. There's one way up there. I don't think we can grab. Uh, and there is an 869 right there. Nothing crazy out of the temperature, even with that 869, temperature didn't go crazy. Plasma is still at 1.61. This little anomaly here is the only thing that has me puzzled. We had not been hit by coral mass ejection. This is pure solar winds causing this geomagnetic storm. Jumping to our ACE satellite from our Discover satellite, our older satellite just to prove it. There's that anomaly up there. I guess there's about 10 or 15 ticks. Each one stands for a minute. You can see that instead of starting at 400, we started at 600. We have been over 800 a couple of times, and we'll continue to trend up. Temperature has stayed normal all day long. Shields are down. All right, these are the Delta class sunspots that we've been looking at. One is negative over positive in the southern hemisphere, as it should be, but very complex and large. The other one, to me, looks like negative over positive in the northern hemisphere, which, again, would be that reverse polarity sunspot we looked at. It's arguably either, but I do think it looks like the black is over the white here, which would be negative over positive or reverse polarity. Again, they tell us that those are super rare, but we seem to see them almost daily. All right, this is a no-go. This was taken 48 hours ago. 48 hours ago, so it's completely useless. I don't know why they haven't upgraded this. That curl hole is further 
to the right here, as we all saw, which means it's had time to reach Earth. The one right before this, the HDMI magnetogram, was taken at 5 a.m. this morning on the 1st, so it was a good picture. A few hours old, but this one's over 48 hours old and completely useless. Over to Euphoria, the ESA. I guess the Europeans are on vacation. This hasn't been messed with in about a week's time. Completely wrong. They have, uh, well, this is the 10th here, I believe. Plasma shooting up to the moon. Let's see, 30th, or the 1st, excuse me. As y'all can see, they have plasma much, much higher than it really is, and even going higher. And there wasn't really a coronal mass ejection. There was earthbound. It took for the first, as y'all can see, it goes to about there. Ridiculous. What's even more ridiculous is their solar wind prediction. It starts here on the first, and y'all can see that it's down here. Below 300 kilometers, never above 350 kilometers per second. Uh, it's more than twice that fast currently. What a waste of time and money. All right, taking a look at where Earth is. Earth is right here. We have uh, Ceres behind it, Saturn, Neptune, Eris, Pluto, uh, we have geomagnetic connections to everything in pink here. Uranus. So, in a real bad spot on the far side of, of our solar system where all the gas giants are. Someone also mentioned to me that Pluto takes 248 years to orbit the sun. And I had mentioned a much larger number. And they were absolutely correct. I did check on that for us. So 248 years. And time-wise, uh, it, well, takes the longest. Neptune is the slowest moving planet. But Pluto takes the longest time period to orbit our sun. Now, with that said, we should expect an uptick in earthquake seismic volcanic activity while Earth's on this side of the solar system. God bless, guys. Please share. Please subscribe. We are going to be giving a giveaway uh, or two out to people that watch the whole videos. I just haven't decided how I'm going to do it, but I will at some point this week figure it out. I'll probably mention two different numbers uh, one at one point of the video, one at another point of the video. And the people that email me those numbers would be uh, put into the drawing. And I'm not sure what we're going to give away yet, but I'm sure it'll be super cool. With that said, God bless. Please share, subscribe, and always remember that anything's possible in the bizarro world.